Hi, and welcome to this course, Design to Production with Rhino Inside. So in this course, we're going to be covering the basics of Rhino Inside Revit, as well as looking at some of the workflows that we're using here at BIG. And we're going to be using one of our projects, the Cocoa Towers in Miami, as an example of how we're using Rhino Inside Revit to move from our design space in Rhino into our documentation space in Revit. In this course, we'll be using Rhino 6, Rhino Inside Revit, and of course, Revit itself. Before we get started and, and jump into installing and all that kind of stuff, I wanted to talk a little bit about BIM at BIG, how it's utilized and why Rhino Inside is becoming a key tool in our BIM and computational workflows. So many of the, the products that you may be familiar with here at BIG have all been developed in some form in BIM. And when I say BIM, I specifically mean Revit. And so we have a strong use of BIM within the option or a strong adoption of BIM within the office, mainly thanks to Jan Lechnik, who is the director of BIM here at BIG, and he has really pioneered its integration in the office. And so for us, Revit has been a clear platform for us to use as a documentation tool. However, at the same time, it's clearly not where we explore design, for example. Rhino is our kind of chosen tool for design exploration. So as a result, we have a clear separation between this kind of design world in Rhino and our documentation world in Revit. So at the same time, you know, BIG is well known for our highly iterative design process. You know, concepts can explore a variety of different solutions before we get to our kind of chosen design to move forwards with. And of course, Rhino gives us that flexibility in design, especially when coupled with Grasshopper. And so, you know, each one, of course, is good for certain things. So we're often moving between the two worlds, between our design world and our documentation world, and between Rhino and Revit, of course. And of course, we're not, you know, typically we start off by moving from Rhino into Revit, but of course, we're also moving backwards and we're kind of, as the project evolves and, and gets further down the line, we're kind of jumping back and forth more and more, whether it's to, you know, we want to create a bit more detail using Revit. For example, Revit's very good at creating curtain panels, things like that. We can bring that back in for maybe purposes of visualization, for example. Of course, at the same time, in a perfect world, our project would be developing at the same rate that we are documenting our projects. So we're modeling and designing at the kind of same level as we're drawing and creating whatever the submission or the deliverables are for our project. Now, of course, in a real world, that's never the case, right? You have ebbs and flows of um, design development. And uh, so, you know, you could be developing the project and then you get some kind of new information from the client or whatever, and you have to kind of go back, start from scratch and, and kind of work the project in a slightly different direction. So if we were to kind of look way back at our old 2D kind of world of delivery, there was that kind of moment where you had that pens down design freeze and followed by this frantic week of production or documentation. And this is where you kind of have that frantic moment where you're documenting everything and, and doing design booklets and drawings. And so the philosophy and implementation at BIM has always been to kind of try and streamline this process. And so whilst the design may be kind of fluctuating and changing, we can still set up kind of drawing sets and documentation world in Revit. And then it allows a bit more flexibility for the design side to kind of explore different options and then, you know, bring in that information or that model or whatever it is. And then we can kind of continue the development of the production. So it's more like streamlining this process of design into documentation or production. And so, you know, more recently, this kind of back and forth between Rhino and Revit has been increasing, um, especially as the project kind of develops into the later stages. We're still using Rhino for design exploration and optioneering. At the same time, we're getting into SD, for example, where we're starting to create much more developed drawings and drawing sets and so on and so forth. 
And so, you know, previously the way that we managed this was this kind of workflow. So we had whatever kind of model that we're referencing in Rhino, whether that's been developed in Grasshopper, you know, with a script or without. We typically use Grasshopper to reference that model or reference some kind of information from it and then send that across to Dynamo in the form of an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV and then uh, use Dynamo to kind of rebuild those elements and then thus rebuild the Revit model. And so, of course, the reason why I've put Excel as that kind of interoperability tool was because that was the most basic form you can send stuff across. Of course, we experimented with a whole host of kind of interoperability tools, and that's where we came across Rhino Inside, and immediately it stood out simply for the fact that a, it was able to kind of streamline this process between our two worlds. And we could not only move, you know, from Rhino into Revit, but we could also quite easily reverse that process from Revit into Rhino. And also, when we're looking at the skill set of, you know, people within the office and people joining the office, a lot of people have kind of Rhino experience, maybe a little bit of Grasshopper experience, again, a little bit of Revit experience. And so you can build on, on foundations of people's skill sets rather than, you know, having to teach maybe a new tool such as Dynamo and then the whole process of whatever that interoperability tool is. So this is really why Rhino Inside Revit has kind of stood out. And, and within testing it within the BIM team, we already started to implement it on live projects um, almost within the week. And so essentially, that's what we're going to be exploring in this course. We'll be taking this project from Rhino into Revit and vice versa. And of course, we'll be using Grasshopper to do so. So hopefully this gives you a bit of background as to you know how we work a big and why Rhino Inside is really an emerging as a key tool for us. So in the next class, we're going to go through the setup of Rhino Inside Revit before we jump into some specifics of the components and things like that. So jump over to the next class and we'll get started. See you in the next class.